So we've, we've decided to make it TG, TGIFTT. Thank God it's Friday, Thursday, Twitch. Just to make it a little mm. more confusing for people. Anyways, I don't know if you guys saw this amazing release from Anthropic. They've just released their 100K context window model for doing data analysis, which is fantastic. Everyone's super excited about these releases coming from companies like Anthropic and OpenAI. I mean, it was Google I.O. Uh, this week. The technologies are out of this world, but one thing that people are noticing is that there's an inside group of, of individuals that can use these technologies. And it's not always, it's not always the lay person. Um, it's often the companies which are partnered with Anthropics, com Y Combinator projects which are tied to OpenAI. There seems to be sort of a cabal forming. Um, and, and OpenAI actually got recently uh, sued in San Francisco for this particular move where they're giving access to their plugins uh, and access to their, their models specifically to people that are f funded by Y Combinator and, and have, you know, a lot of equity connection with, with Sam Altman and, and the, the cabal of people that run these tech companies. <clears throat> and this was always the core thesis of, of BitTensor, something that we saw really early on, which was about the distribution of intelligence was the real social issue that was going to arise in the 21st century. And it's happening pretty darn quickly. Um, someone asked uh, why, why they couldn't get access to Claude's anthropic and they, you actually had to sign up and write a letter and, and, and give reason why you'd be using uh, this technology. That's a nice cover for, um, you know, the, some ethical concern or safety concerns often are the cover for these co corporations. Oh, you, sorry, we can't give it out to you because we're worried what you might do with it. <clears throat> and regulation is coming down pretty, pretty fast around AI, around usage, um, so that there's an in-group and an out-group who have access to this incredible technology. And then someone says, hey, infrared scale to allow thousands of millions of users to run inference on your GPUs and manage all these associated application state isn't trivial, which is true. It's very expensive to run these machine learning models. It's really expensive to do the inference part of OpenAI. It's really expensive to do the inference part, especially with a 100,000K token um, sequence length of your models, it's really expensive to run these apps. And in fact, all of these companies are running at a loss. It is too expensive for them. Um, they're applying the Y Combinator scale and then squeeze technique of hyper growth. Same thing that Airbnb did, <clears throat> which is an Uber, let's run at a loss. Um, and then later we'll, we'll, we'll jack the prices and, and everyone will be at a loss, but we'll make a billion dollars. Uh, thanks to Silicon Valley funding schemes. <clears throat> the thing about what we're building with BitTensor is that we're scaling the inference side of the network so that we can get the maximal access to users. And we, we have something right now. We have the probably the most accessible state-of-the-art language model in the world sitting behind bt.prompt uh, and most of the people on this call are aware of that but because we haven't marketed much um, it's not it's not being used and this is something that we're doing right now is, is trying to push people more into the knowledge of the fact that um, we are accessing or opening the access to this intelligence by procuring it through an incentive model and another explosion just went off, and that was fantastic. It was perfect timing. Um, so last week, we, we made this, uh, this you could say, like pivot or swap or injection or contraction and growth um, between subnet 3 and subnet 1. Um, 
<clears throat> I think we got a pretty, uh, you know, I think a lot of people wanted to see this happen. We were really excited about it. We wanted it to happen way more, fa uh, way faster than it actually did happen. Um, and, you know, it's going to be a, a, a long process because we're dealing with equilibriums in complex networks. We are pushing the incentive structure on S1 so that we can grow out the inference capabilities of that network to ensure that we, we can sustain the type of open system where we don't have to tell people that they have to sign up or they can only have a certain amount of access or or or, or that you need to be a company that's been on, inside our network to use BitTensor. <clears throat> The 128 validators that are gating access into BitTensor can choose who they want to act to access the system. And with that number of entry points, there's always going to be one person or one group or one group or one team that's going to be open. And where the foundation is doing the best to be that right now, but we have a lot of teams out there in the network that are building the API endpoints, that are building the application layers, the OpenAI plugin tooling, the, the Claude Anthropic um, browser extensions, uh, where, all right, Claude's closed down, OpenAI won't give you access, well, you come to BitTensor because we can't even stop you from getting into the system. We can't even stop you from, from querying uh, these, these models and, and using intelligence and, and being eye to eye with the Silicon Valley elites. And that I think is the core mission of open intelligence, not just open ownership. Um, and so we're doing that right now. So last week we, we launched this. I think this is one of the coolest, one of the coolest technologies that BitTensor's ever released. Uh, it's simpler than OpenAI's API for doing completions. Um, it works right now. It's a little bit slow because you know we, we're not an infrastructure company uh, at the web web two layer. So we're we're just really uh, you know getting that that system running um, so that we're load balancing requests and people are beginning to use this. Uh, and this works. It's it's amazing. You can plug this into you can plug this anywhere in your Python. Uh, you last week I was I was messing around with an auto tensor, which was just an auto. -G GPT clone and and that works. You know, it's one of the things that people are talking about with that technology is it's really expensive. This is actually free, um, and it works. You can have an auto GPT model running, um, and we're looking for the open source con contributors to build this kind of technology. Um, it's right at our fingertips. <clears throat> By the way, about this BT prompt, what is the square root of two? How does this work? Uh, this query is is going to the Open Tensor Foundations validator head and that validator head is using its tau to query the network so we use the the stake that has been delegated to us um as the entry point that gives us that bandwidth uh so thanks everyone who who does delegate to us we use it for research uh, we also use it to, to keep this endpoint open but but uh there are a bunch of other projects that in in the next couple of weeks uh, we know like mog machines um Tau stats, which are going to produce an endpoint here that, that you know, hopefully it's better than ours. We, we want that type of competition to come through. Um, you can also use BitTensor LLM. Langchain integration is here. It works. I did a doc store the other day um, on our on our documents uh, with, with, I believe we use Pinecone as the embedding system. Um, but uh, you can just plug and play with with uh, Langchain now with BitTensor. So that's really cool. I mean, and I believe, Ali, you, you did another version of the documentation with, with BitTensor LLM and you were working with something like this. If you're still on the oh, call. Yeah, yeah, yeah Alice. Still on this and also building something with it that's going to be pretty dope coming into the Discord very soon. Mm -hmm. So for the first time, really, BitTensor is Python integrated. And next week, we're going to be uh, releasing text prompting onto master. So it's no longer going to be re really in the alpha stage. It's going to be, this is BitTensor master release uh come next wednesday really excited um, to see what people build should be as easy uh, as bit a pip install bit tensor um, if you have problems let us know um and and boom you can just replace all open ai lms with bit tensor lm uh and and there you go
So where are we going next? I mean, this is these obviously big changes. I mean, the, the network is still growing, still reaching equilibrium. We're, we're doing a lot of analysis behind the scenes on on how we can maximize the throughput of of the network. How can we service this type of this level of inference and keep ourselves open um, through incentivized computing? And I think that uh, we have the right technology to do this better than any competitor, you know, out there. We we can do inferences per second better than them because we build an incentive mechanism that touches right into that. So where are we going next? What are we going to use this for? So um, this is next. This is probably the next release, not right now. Um, one of the things we really want to touch into is the ability to broadcast queries. No one else in the world can do this. Um, we're the only LLM uh, through Python that can query all 512. Uh, um, miners on BitTensor. So we can get all sorts of diversity um, from the network that other people can. And if you think about it in terms of intelligence as, as being a signal um, and and multiple different signals filling up the, the spectrum, uh, we're, we're really maximizing the bandwidth uh, that people can get out of this. And, and uh, more of an ML ops direction, building data sets uh, that we can use to do distillation is, is one of the, the most I think promising directions for for BitTensor uh, that's not client facing, right? If you're a machine learning engineer and you want to get uh, a, a large amount of prompt output and do that for currently for free um, and have that with a, a variety of diver a lot of diversity, this is this is definitely the technology to use. And there's <clears throat> this debate raging on in the machine learning world about. Um, you know, what's the moat? Uh, people will claim that the evergreen moat is data, but for the first time ever, <clears throat> I think in the intelligence space, the outputs of the machine learning model is becoming the, the real commodity, the gold um, that can be used to train other machine learning models. We have already seen this with Anthropic. Anthropic, you know, teaches its machine learning models via prompting itself. It's self-distillation. Uh, they prompt themselves to to, to produce data sets and filter the, the outputs. So all of that's very expensive and, and it's going to require bandwidth and BitTensor can provide that bandwidth and diversity to do sort of more machine learning operations. So that's broadcast queries. This is coming out next week. It's really exciting. We're just testing this today. Boom. Do people hear that? Ala, do you hear that boom on your side? Cause I do. Yeah, it's... I do. I do. We have to bring that down I love it. I love it because I, I feel like it's, it's like people clapping, you know. Um, uh, HTTP bit tensor. Fuck yeah. Excuse my language. I shouldn't swear on Twitch stream, should I? Um, the ah, that's fine. yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, we are opening up every miner on bit tensor to an HTTP endpoint with fast API, which is going to allow curl. Um, it creates a automatic front end for every miner so they can service requests um, from languages like JavaScript directly from the command line. Uh, this is this is the, our first extension around sorry, away from the core gRPC technology that we've always been using, which is very uh, performant but limiting for the builders. Uh, you know recently I've been talking with some people that are connecting BitTensor into Noster. They were asking for, um, you know, information about how they could how they could use a different language and not just use our gRPC Python and 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 so that's coming out and that's more of a you know a development push but it's really exciting if you're a developer, um, you know, we can do this from the command line really easily and and it works um, just like a lot of uh, other APIs out there. <clears throat> this is actually, I think there's a final point in this slide and and you know it's a good one to close on. Last week, we made some decisions about how we wanted to shift the emission for BitTensor towards prompting away from S3 into S1. And <clears throat> I think that reasonably shook some people up because uh, there's many companies at this point that are, and people and individuals and miners that are relying on a consistent inflation system uh, for themselves, for their companies, and the whims 
good decision or not good decision on the part of the foundation because we have access to the um, this particular uh, function call on on the chain uh, whether or not it's a good decision doesn't really matter if it's if it's one that can be only dis decided by a small group uh, we don't have decentralization and we're not living up to the ideals of this project but it's not so much about ideals it's really about practicality uh, if a small group controls this system it'll die uh, we'll be in trouble uh, we'll all be in trouble if we can't uh, get to something akin to a DAO and we've been slow in this process because we you know BitTensor is needed a ramp up period it's needed time uh, for uh, the the tooling to come into place for the miners to come into place for the community to build for us to understand how to run this completely new form of technology but very soon we are going to be releasing pseudo key decentralization um, via a pseudo council on top of the function calls that that manipulate and determine the increase and or decrease of emission on certain subnets as well as their creation um, as well as pseudo <clears throat> upgrade chain upgrades for the chain <clears throat> this is the beginning of a massive process for BitTensor of ramping down the role of individuals and pushing towards something where we're run by everyone likely on this call um, everyone who's a Tau holder will be will have the ability to to have a say in what this technology does and how it reaches a symbiosis with themselves and and hopefully you know their communities and and, and people around them so how is this likely going to work um, the specific function and design is not in place but it's very likely that we will use the nominees, the, the delegates that are, are uh, being voted on right now at, in a form of liquid representational democracy that have votes over particular calls in the system. Uh, we'll likely have multiple houses um, and retain some control for the foundation early days uh, with the intention of re removing all of that in the uh, near future. So that's that's... We wanted to pair this with the news about the change of emission in the first and third networks uh, because uh, it's time for the foundation to really step back and for the community to step in. And that became very apparent over the last little while. So anyways, that's the end of the... Oh, yeah, is there a release in June? Oh, yeah, right. <clears throat> Fuck. I almost forgot an entire other section of this network. I mean, so of this presentation and this network. We have a lot of ideas about what we can do going beyond BT prompt. BT prompt is amazing. BT prompt can be in many ways the bedrock of the entirety of the network. If we just stopped here and made this, you know, really, really, really performant endpoint, we would be providing a lot of value and, and doing a, uh, the, the God's work, decentralizing intelligence um, around language. And, you know, in the beginning there was the word and word was God and all that, but there's way more to understanding than just prompting and doing text uh, to completions. We're um, going to be expanding the number of subnetworks over the next quarter into text to embedding, text to image, text to speech, image to text, speech to text, and likely a number of other modalities. All through BitTensor, all incentivized, all accessible via validator heads or <clears throat> uh, for miners in the system. This is going to mean uh, a drastic expansion in the number of UIDs that we have on the network, uh, hopefully reducing the registration costs. And this is really the holy grail. What we're looking at here, where we can move between modalities with BitTensor is where things get really, really interesting um, in terms of working in a multimodal ecosystem. <clears throat> Opening eyes really cool, but we're more we're more bullish on Meta's JEPA model, uh, multimodality where every modality moves between every modality. <clears throat> and that will all be built on top of the BitTensor subnetworks. So when it comes to access, 
uh, you'll have Midjourney, you'll have Claude, you'll have OpenAI, um, you'll have Pinecone, you'll have Langchain, all of that with inside of an ecosystem that's open ownership built up from people, for people, for, for people that are, are contributing. Um, yeah, so that's that's the the long term really. And let's go to the the slide. I mean, it's just really exciting to to talk about what we've been doing over the last little while and, and where we're going. Um, Ala, do you want to read out some of the the questions for me, and I'll I'll see if I can answer them um, as best of my ability. Yeah. I haven't read them, so it's gonna be really off the cuff. Um, yeah. One moment. Um, just wrapping up the recording. Awesome, this seems fine. It seems weird in my audio, but I'll figure that out later. Okay, um, let me open the slide over here. Apologies for the delay my, on my end. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, we've got quite a few. Uh, let's start off with the first one, which is Pretty easy answer. Um, do you plan on releasing text to image and image to text this year? I believe you just answered this one. I did. And the answer is yes. Yeah. And the answer is yes. It's coming in. Um, when will you see smart contracts on Potenzer? It's a really good question. I'm opening a bounty for that through the neural internet. It's actually something that I forgot to mention in my slides. Um, there was, there's been a fantastic development in the ecosystem, uh, neural internet produced a bounty program. Uh, you can go check it out if you're a developer. Uh, you, you have some ideas for bounties. You can list them there and they can be funded by the foundation. So it's a really great way to plug into the incentive system for this community and um, you know to, to, to solve bounties, to list them, to suggest them. Um, when it comes to, to the smart contracts, um, there are smart contract developers out there that I think can probably implement this. And I would love to fund that through the neural internet bounty program um, and, and get a lot more of the open source community working on the chain. So there is no plans from the foundation to perform this um, in not, in, not for another couple months at least uh, because right now our, our main priority is a pseudo, pseudo key decentralization. Um, but I would love to to read some suggestions or some proposals uh, from from within the bounty program. I think it'd be great. Yeah, the bounty program looks looks really, looks really nicely done. So nicely done, guys. Uh, how many sub networks are we going to see in the next year? Low value is three. High value is ten. Yeah, depending on our progress and how stable the subnets are as we deploy them. Yeah. Um, can you explain the why of the collab between OpenTensor and Cerebrus? The why? Yeah, yeah. why is there a collab? Why is there a collab? Um, because they're fantastic research scientists. And they, we have collaborated with them to train a foundation model. Um, that we're going to release into into the network, which can be used by miners uh, as their base model to fine tune with inside the prompting network. Like one of the things we're really excited about is this recursive nature of the prompting network, where you can use the data set generated from the the, the prompts um, as a way of fine tuning and finding a uh, a niche within inside the market. But that requires a a base model, so it's going to have a pretty large sequence length, which makes it quite unique. And and that's yeah that's the reason yeah 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 that makes perfect sense. Is the team getting a lot of interest to build on the network? How will OpenTensor attract the best developers and businesses to build out adoption? Um, mind if I pick this one up, Cost? If people can hear you, yeah. I'm hoping so. I can say it, and if people can't hear me, I guess uh, let us know in the chat. Um, so, effectively, right now um, with this API. That's uh, that's been described by Cons with the new documentation coming in. What we really want to do is we want to start making it easy to attract the um, what we call the Web 2.0 devs, the people, the machine learning scientists, the people who are interested in building cool models and maybe not as attracted uh, to the blockchain, but more attracted to the, the concept of being able to access all these AI models behind the network. 
So what they want to do is they want to build their applications on there, or they want to power whatever research they're doing, or et cetera, et cetera. So we want to do now, and that's part of the reasoning why the validators, um, why the validators, uh, you know, the, the Open Tensor Validator is actually you know easy to use and free to use effectively, is because we want to attract people in. We, we want them to kind of like join in, look at our documentation. Hey, this is really cool. I want to try this out. Three lines of code. Holy cow, this thing works. And then have them be more incentivized to build on top of our stuff, as opposed to having somebody who's just um, having to use OpenAI and basically paying them to use one model as a result. Um, there is some interest coming in uh, from potential businesses, but that is still something that is in the pipeline, so we don't announce anything yet. But as we go, we'll definitely keep you guys posted. Did everyone hear me, or am I just talking to myself? I heard you. You sounded great, but uh, <laughs> uh, Carol heard you as well, so that's great. It's, okay, it's okay. coming through my yeah. the mics on my computer and going through the Twitch, so yeah. <laughs> Okay, amazing. Uh, I guess next question is, do you plan on releasing text to audio and audio text this year? We already answered that. Um, let's see. When the new website will be ready slash released, we need a good looking website and a lot of documentation on it. Totally agree uh, with that. The, totally yeah, agree. so go ahead, Const. Totally agree with that. Yeah, it's very much yeah. underway. It's very, very much underway. We have some developers um, building features day in, day out right now. For the first time, it's really, um, a working, cracking. yeah, it's cracking. It's a cracking machine. So there's, well. yeah, there's, there's, there's some issue in some ways because the bitensor.com website, um, although controlled by the foundation, uh, is not meant to be the the center of attention um, for applications. So we we are actually moving a lot of the content, things like chat tensor over to opentensor.ai um, so that we can make bittensor.com um, the parent to a lot of other projects, uh, not just the foundation. Uh, for instance, Tau Stats and Neural Internet and, and Tensor Exchange and, and other projects that are building within the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, when is the official chat tensor version coming out? Is it next week? Uh, I don't think next week is accurate. I think probably yeah. maybe a little more than that because yeah. the team's busy on the website work. And yeah. for the most part, it's just requiring more of a stable backend. Yeah. Um, it's kind of the big push. Yeah, no, but, no, um, it, no comment on the order, exact release sure. on that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What were some major highlights at Consensus? I think that's more for Caro to answer, but he's not. I don't think he's here. He's in the he's in the chat. Rob, feel free to to answer that question. Mm -hmm. In the chat. But okay. Um, with the recent changes, can we expect subnet one to have an increase of validators to one twenty eight as opposed to the currently stated sixty four? Yes, we now, will move not... it to one twenty eight uh, as as soon as possible, uh, but not until mm -hmm. we get to ten twenty four UIDs just to ensure that the the network is not bloated. Yeah, we want to make sure that um, the information is coming out is clean. Um, are you guys still going to do seven days of coding? Ah, the seven days of coding. That was Rob. Um, and that's a great idea. We should do that. What is seven days of coding? It's that's just where you, we, we, we launch a new app every, every day for seven days. We could just line up the subnets and launch a new subnet every yeah. day. So it looks like it's June 5th to July 5th. That's not seven days. No, that's not. <laughs> 30 days of coding. Oh my God, I'm down. Wow, 30 days. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be fun to see. I just, I can't wait. I'm just gonna sit there with some popcorn. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, what will be the harder requirements for miners slash validators for text to image, image to text, text to audio, and audio to text? What will be the harder parts? The, the hardware requirements. The, the hardware requirements. Really depends on which model you're running. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, I think that it looks like servicing inferences is going to require like an, a pretty beacon machine. Yeah, especially for image. Uh, it like Why? H100. Sorry, go ahead. If you can get the Definitely H100s, right. get the H100s. They're, they're flying off the shelves. So, yeah. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, why is subnet one mostly erotic text generation requests and people running open AI API endpoints? It seems it's impossible to serve various models due to this. Yeah. So the erotica probably is, uh, Mr. Seeker, my guess. <laughs> yeah, probably. I'm just going to put that out there. It's probably erotica from Mr. Seeker. He tends to be quite interested in that. Um, yeah. Uh, and the, the diversity, um, aspect of the network is, is something that we're actively looking at. Um, we're, we're likely to add, I mean, this is a sneak peek because we're, we're not, we're not for sure yet, but we're, we're likely going to extend the incentive, uh, with a, like a direct explicit diversity requirement, uh, which will downsample things like open AI endpoints. Mm -hmm. Do you plan to add text to image and text to audio models during the seven, during the following seven week change? No. So yeah, but we, that's but we will, we but we will be testing on the test network with those models. So if you want to, you can query them via that network. Mm -hmm. At what conference this year can we meet you? Me? Let me see that. I think everybody, but yeah, sure. You. Conferences. We're not entirely sure yet um, which conferences are happening or not even this year, but we will keep you guys posted in case someone's in town and they want to meet up. We'd love to do a business for meetup. Uh, okay. So, sorry. Is that it? Over. I'll either be an open test university or an accelerator where students can learn how to build on the network, especially with minimal knowledge. That's... I think it's a really good idea, mm -hmm. but, uh, what I was going to suggest that we do, and I think it's something I've been talking to you about quite a bit const is maybe starting a, a mini lecture series, mm -hmm. just to help folks kind of onboard and learn how the tester works and everything and people can watch videos instead. Um, and then from there, gauging on basically gauging on the interest, we'll see if it's worth maybe creating Coursera course or something like that, and then moving on from there. That might make the most sense. Um, this is an open call, a big... open call for people. If they, if someone wants to make right. a open tensor Academy, I will fund it. Foundation will help. Yeah. Either through bounties or for delegate through delegation. Yeah. Any plans for marketing? Word of mouth will only get you so far. Other AI projects did 10x more this year equals would need more money for BitTensor development. 10x more and 10x down, no doubt. Um, I mean, we've all seen crypto GPT. Yeah. Uh, Marketing-wise, um, we we have a group of people that do marketing, um, and I believe that conversation is is undergoing right is ongoing right now. Yeah, it's ongoing. We're still working. The, the tricky thing about BitTensor is that we're trying to, as Con said earlier, we're trying to kind of step, the foundation try to step away. So if we do bring in um, anyone to actually help us do marketing, it has to be a very, very specific ask. Um, it's not going to be some generic, you know, finding random ads on Instagram for BitTensor. It was something very, very specific. So we'll keep you guys posted, but this is something that's, there's conversations that are way at the moment. Fantastic. Will oh. you hire? Uh, we hire a CEO, CFO, or COO, somebody to manage internal affairs, management, looking for slash hiring new devs, anyone office work, PR. Anyone applying? Let me know. Yeah. If you're applying, we'd love to hear from you. When are you planning to increase the number of keys in sub one? How many keys are planned to be in sub one after seven weeks? Uh, we're going to discuss this. So we've just increased the number. Uh, we've just increased the number yesterday and the subsequent are going to have the rest of the increases as, as we go thank you financing and i think that's it on the questions i'm seeing anything else that's that is um let's see here is there anything else let's stop there that's, uh, th that's great just asking for a couple but that's it we're good everyone everyone follow me because i like the explosions it'll be sound like a bunch of clapping And that's it, guys. Yeah, awesome. thanks. Thanks for coming, awesome. everyone. We pretty we kept it pretty clear on on.